Hello. In this set of videos, we're going to go through how to make a basic game. Um, so why don't we dive right in and see what we're going to end up building. So we're actually going to build an applet, and we'll see how to set up our applet in a second. But just to give you an idea of how the game works, the game is designed such that if I move my mouse around the screen, the red, the red rectangle follows it around. Um, and then using the keyboard, I can control the black rectangle. And the idea is that you want to get one person controls the black rectangle while the other person controls the red one. And when you happen to hover the red one over the black one, you can see the score in the top left corner is in increasing. And on the right hand side, you can see there's a timer counting down until you run out of time. So let's dive right in, shall we? So um, this is done in what's called an applet. And an applet is a Java program that's ready to be put on the internet. So we're going to go up here in our whatever workspace we're working in. We're going to add a new project. And I'm going to add this, in this case, a basic Java applet. And let's call this first game. And then I hit finish. And what you'll notice in this case is that instead of just getting one, one area where your files show up, you have this section called classes and then the section called SRC. SRC stands for source code. Classes is where the HTML code is stored. So you can see you can expand the inf expand that file folder to see what's in there. So any Java files that we use, we put under SRC. And we don't really, at this point, put anything under classes. If you double click first game, you'll see that first game is some HTML code, which has been pre-populated for you. And that's what you would copy and put right into your web page if you wanted to um, publish this. And if we come down to first game, we can see that first game, a lot of the code has already been built for us. Um, so in short, an applet, like I said, is a program that's been, been designed to be hosted on a website. And instead of having a main method, they have what's called the init. So the init method is called immediately when, when this class file is executed. Um, it's similar to a main method in that regard. So for our purposes, we can think of the init as the same as the main. When we start this program, init is executed. The other thing in the, an applet is that we have a method in there called paint. Paint is, is always called when the program is executed. And it's also called when certain events happen. And we'll talk about that shortly. But for our purposes, what we need to know is that any of the actual drawing to the pane needs to be done in here. And you can see if I come up here to my first game, to, to run my program, I right click on first game, htm, and I run the file. And then we get the pop up. And there's my applet. And you can see that we have a draw string, welcome to Java. And there it is right there. If you're not familiar with drawing in panes yet in applets, I do recommend you pause and go back and try one of the earlier tutorials. So first thing we want to do with this is we don't want anything actually written in this. So I'm going to delete that. Um, and what I want to do now is I want to add some fields to this class. So the fields that we want to include at this point are we want to include two rectangle objects. These are what are called data classes because they store the data or the information about the rectangles that I'm going to draw. So Java has a built-in class called rectangle. And we're going to make a rectangle card called R1, which is going to not be initialized at this point. We're going to make a rectangle called R2. The next thing I want to add to my program at this point are Boolean variables for the keystrokes. So we're going to have a the black character can be moved around by pressing keys on the keyboard. And we want this program to keep track of what keys are pressed. And to do that, we're going to introduce Boolean fields for each key. So if the key is pressed down, the Boolean field will be set to true. And if it's released, it's set to false. So these are going to be um, player keys. So we're going to have a Boolean and up key. And that's going to be set to false. A Boolean, oh, I should spell that correctly. A down key, and that's going to be set to false initially. A 
a boolean left key and that's going to be set to false initially and a boolean right key and that's going to be set to false as well. I haven't specified what keys those are associated with yet. We'll do that a little later. But I have said that we have four keys in this game. We need to keep track of their state. And when I say state, I mean are they pressed or not pressed? So if we come up to first game, or sorry, if we go up here and we build this file, it should build no problem. Perfect. And now if I right click on first game, I say run file, I can run my applet. And currently we'll get still a blank screen because nothing is actually painted on the screen yet. In the next video, we're going to start getting some stuff rendered on that screen.